Hi there. Um, I thought I'd do a little video on uh, my new daily. Um, it's a 1991 E36 325i. So um, this this is probably one of the earliest 325s left on the road, I would say, and probably one of the earliest ones ever registered. So we're on an H here, as you can see. And... Um, this is quite a low miler as well. It's done sixty, just just ticked over sixty one thousand miles. So um, yeah, it hasn't done a great deal of work. Um, I thought it's um, I thought it'd be worth doing a video on it because it's um, it's basically well it's it's unmodified and it's also one um, it's a it's a good example of of an E thirty six before they changed you know updated any bits on it and it's got a few little bits on it that were only on the very earliest models. So, um, yeah, it might be interesting to you, um, and if it is, then stick about. So, um, it's on these, um, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, and I can't even remember the, the, the style number for them, but they are one of my personal favourites. They do look a bit bumhole, but they just, they, to me, they just shout 325 e36 or 320 it's just sort of um those that style of wheel you saw on the early cars so yeah um it's shot in 205 front and rear so not over overly tired um by um any standard um so uh this is obviously a um it's got these these grey topped bumpers, so they're grey, the whole, but all the bumper is grey, um, front and rear, as are the side skirts. Well, there's no skirts, they're just sills, look, they're naked. And, um, yeah, these bumpers were eclipsed, I think, in about late 92, early 93, um, at which point they had um, a, uh, a colour coded top to them, and the actual bumper design I like the pressing of it is different especially on the back I've noticed the uh, the later color coded ones do have a different sort of molding to them so yeah um, that is of interest um, and it certainly dates the car immediately if you know what you're looking at um, so yeah this is an early M50 so it's non Vanos 192 PS or um, horsepower depending on which source you look at and interestingly this would have been the base for the B3 3 litre I featured um, a year or so back um, so yeah but that was that was a 94 95 so that would have been a Vanos engine and by then the 328 had already come and um, taken place of the 325 so yeah what I'll do is I'll give you a little look around the interior so I've got seat covers on because the early E36s were um, they had really awful um, awful quality cloth but these are in remarkably good condition and I sort of wanted to save that um, it's really easy just to put in a leather interior but you know there's just fewer and fewer of these left it's got the original look at that the original thicker the later uh, e36 mats i don't believe were quite as thick as this didn't have the same style so yeah it's got the early dash which even in the early road tests was commented on as being well pants I mean, I've got an article where they say about, um, it's, on, it's on a 1991 car, and they're mentioning how the, the glove box is sagging. Um, so this is fairly standard. They had to really get their act together because they had so many complaints about the interior quality, the plastic quality and the quality of the, of the seat material, etc. So, yeah, you've got these fabulous cup holders here. Not really sure what good they are. But, yeah, you can you can hear the quality of things isn't, particularly great but it's really clean it's really nice it's really matte it's not shiny it's just a nice thing to see so this is a this is an se so i'm not even sure i've ever seen a non-se 325 but 
it must have been a thing. Um, but SE, that basically got you rear electric windows as opposed to um, manual, wi uh, manual winders. And it got you a sunroof. There. And it got you headlight washers. Um, I need to actually get um, another one for this side, but they're about 80 quid from BMW, so I can sod right off. Um, right, let's show you some other bits on it. So they also got the early grey mirror covers there. Um, there you go, look nice and clean. Got no folding rear armrests and you also got no headrests so uh, yeah your passengers can can stuff it basically um, when I got this I thought I thought this was missing but it turns out on the early cars they just had a bit of black plastic here and this was all naked this was just bare metal which looked unfinished and here's quite nice and clean so yeah, it's even got the it's got an original wheel in here. Lovely, and that's the original dealer. It's a five, uh, sorry, four, four-digit area code, which obviously dates that. So the rear arches on this have been painted. It's it's been looked after. I think it's had basically one owner from new and it was a farmer gentleman and he, he uh the story was he went into the dealership um i'm not sure which car he had but he went in for a fan belt and came out with this car so it obviously it caught his eye um it's had a set of front wings on it and the rear arch is done and they're just starting to go just a tiny wickle bit but i mean you know c36 so whatever um yeah, uh, so I'll show you the steering wheel, which is plastic. Um, so they're rare, you know, they're quite rare, to, hard to find now these plastic steering wheels because everybody updates them. And yeah, it does look it does look crap, but you know, it's part of the charm of it, really. So you've got a trip computer here, and on there it can show all sorts of bits like um, exterior temp. Obviously, you'll be familiar with this. If you own an E36, um, also of interest is when I looked at the original spec for these, so what they actually came with, they came with a, a, a radio preparation pack. So you didn't actually get um, a radio on an early E36. You, it came with just the wiring and the speakers, and then the dealer fit you a head unit, um, which is in contrast to the later E36s, which as you know, will have like a a, a, a a head unit that really looks the part. And um, yeah, so that was a, I'd never really realized that, but yeah, there you go. That would be, um, that would be dealer fit. Um, so yeah, five speed box and um, no cruise control or anything like that. This hasn't got any options. It's got the original windscreen in it, look. With a running in sticker. It's got one little stone chip on it, but doesn't seem to be getting any worse or anything. And then you've got your sunroof there. Um, I will. You got electric mirrors. And this actually, this stereo doesn't work at the minute, so I need to uh, have a look at that. There's a dealer sticker in there. That's a nice thing. Don't know if that will focus on that. Nope. Sod that. Right. Oh yeah, I'll just show you the mileage. So I had an, uh, a running issue. In fact, I've still got a slight issue with it, um, where it would hesitate under where it would hesitate under um, heavy throttle in a high gear. So like in third, fourth, and fifth at sort of fifteen hundred revs, you put your foot right down, it would just hesitate slightly, and then it would clear itself and it would run really well to the red red line. And uh, I replaced the camshaft sensor. And I replaced the oxygen sensor um, in the exhaust, and um, 
yeah, I still couldn't narrow it down. Um, it took four different machines to do a code read on this. Eventually I got one that could, and it came up with math sensor. So I looked at um, getting a math for it. BMW wants 700 and, I don't know, 700 odd quid. And they obviously want your old one as well. So it's a bit of a problem that. So I've given it a good clean. It seems to be running much better. But um, yeah, that's that. So, um, yeah, you can tell an early M50 because obviously you've got no Vanos here. It would be a lump that would stick out here. That would be your Vanos unit. Um, you've got the, obviously the old metal top to the um, to the oil filter. Um, yeah, so this obviously hasn't got any air conditioning. Um, so it's all nice and, well, sort of simple and easy. Also on these early ones, you've got this, which comes on with the headlights, which is a nice thing, which I don't think was on the later ones. You've also got a loom, an engine loom, that seems to have every single plug just flopping about on it. It's like they hadn't quite figured out the looms yet. Um, so later on, you obviously would spec a car and it would come with the correct loom. This seems to just have everything on it. Um, which is of interest if you find that sort of thing interesting. Um, also, this this cover here that feeds the alternator cooler it looks like it's been plasti welded out of three bits, which on later E36s they sort of made that into one piece. Again, a boring a boring fact, but something that I have noticed. This hasn't got a limited slip differential. Um, obviously, this is just Bogo basement spec, so. It's something I am considering fitting and also possibly vented rears because the early 36s came with solid rears and vented fronts. Um, so, yeah. Um, it also has its original exhaust, which you can't get anymore. They basically, um, the part was superseded and became the 323, 328 back box and exhaust system um, from the um, from the cat section back. Um, and I think that that has... The earlier 325 exhaust has um, less baffling in them, so they're, you know, they sound a bit fruit, more fruity. Um, so uh, this one does sound quite fruity at the minute. I think the back box is an advisory on the MOT, so um, that's something I've got to look at in the future, whether I try and hunt down a new old stock part or um, get one made out of stainless steel. But I, I love the stock sound of a 325, so I don't want to, you know, I didn't want to change that. Um, I've done a little bit here, I've replaced this seal that runs around the back because that was basically non-existent, it fell out as I washed the car. It's a common thing, it's only 40 quid though from uh, on eBay for a, what you know what seems to be a genuine part, so you know that looks that makes it look a lot a lot better. Um, what else have I done? I've done the water pump, it had the original plastic impeller water pump in it, which I replaced with a metal unit. I replaced the viscous coupling. Uh, on the fan and uh, tidied up the jacking points so yeah um, I can't think of anything else interesting to say um, other than it, it feels really tight I thought, oh actually here's something in 2010 the old boy took it into the BMW dealership and uh, he just said to them just go through it and just check everything and make sure it's all alright and uh yeah, they found a leak on the power steering, so they replaced the entire steering rack and column. So, it's a really nice thing. Um, but, uh, when I went to change the fuel filter to try and diagnose this running issue, it still had the original fuel filter on it, which was uh, made in West Germany. So, um, yeah, it's odd that they decided not to do that, considering it had an inspection too at the time. So, you know, that shows you exactly what you get with some, some BMW dealerships. Um, but on these early engines, it's up under the inlet manifold, so it's a bit of a pain to get to. It takes about, well, it took me and a mate 45 minutes, I think, to do, which is, I suppose, long enough that if you're in a dealership, you, you just sort of pretend you've done it. Um, yeah, had a new radiator as well. Uh, so yeah, a nice thing and a rare thing now, considering they've all been sent backwards into uh, backwards into walls so uh, yeah I'll um, take it for a quick spin and uh, yeah thanks for thanks for watching and uh, catch you next time